Hi guys, we're here for a Bible and Year challenge reading. Today we are on July 13th, and that is going to come from Nehemiah 11 through 13, Job 28, and Galatians 1. Okay, so Nehemiah 11. The people occupied Jerusalem. Now the leaders of the people were living in Jerusalem, the holy city at this time. A tenth of the people from the other towns of Judah and Benjamin were chosen by sacred laws to live there too. While the rest stayed where they were. And the people commended everyone who volunteered to resettle in Jerusalem. Here is a list of the names of the provincial officials who came to Jerusalem. Most of the people, priests, Levites, temple servants, and descendants of Solomon's servants continued to live in their own homes in the various towns of Judah, but some of the people from Judah and Benjamin resettled in Jerusalem. From the tribe of Judah, Athiah, son of Uzziah, son of Zechariah, son of Amariah, son of Shephatiah, son of Mahalalel, the family of, of the family of Perez, and Masiah, son of Barach, son of Kol, Hose, Son of Haziah, son of Adiah, son of Joyarib, son of Zechariah, of the family of Shelah. There were also 468 descendants of Perez who lived in Jerusalem, all, outstand, all, all outstanding men. From the tribe of Benjamin, Salu, son of Meshulam, son of Joed, son of Padiah, son of Koliah, son of Messiah, son of Ithiel, son of Jeshiah, and after him there were Gabi and Salai, and a total of 928 relatives. Their chief officer was Joel, son of Zikri, who was assisted by Judah, son of Hasenua, second in commander of the city. From the priests, Jediah, son of Joyarib, Jachin, and Sariah, son of Hilkiah, son of Meshulam, son of Zadok, son of Mariah, son of Ahitub, the supervisor, supervisor of the temple of God, together with 822 of their associates who worked at the temple. Also, there was Adiah, son of Jeroham, son of Pel Peleliah, son of Amzi, son of Zechariah, son of Pasher, son of Malkijah, and 242 of his associates who were heads of their families. There were also... Amish, Amishai, son of Azrael, son of Azai, son of Meshalamoth, son of Immer, and 128 of his outstanding associates. Their chief officer was Zabdil, son of Hagadolim. From the Levites, Shemaiah, son of Hashab, son of Azrakam, son of Hashabiah, son of Bunny. Shabbatai and Jazabad, who were in charge of the work outside the temple of God. Mataniah, son of Micah, son of Zabdi, a descendant of Asaph, who opened the Thanksgiving services with prayer. Bak Bakiah, who was Mataniah's assistant. And Abda, son of Shemua, son of Galal, son of Jeduthun. In all, there were 284 Levites in the holy city. From the gatekeepers, Akab, Talmud, and 172 of their associates who guarded the gates. The other priests, Levites, and the rest of the Israelites lived wherever their family inheritance was located in any of the towns of Judah. However, the temple servants, those whose leaders were Ziha and Gishpa, all lived on the hill of Ophel. The chief officer of the Levites in Jerusalem was Uzi, son of Bani, son of Hashabiah, son of Mataniah, son of Micah, a descendant of Asaph, whose family had served as singers at God's temple. They were under royal orders, which determined their daily activities. Pethahiah, son of Meshezabel, a descendant of Zerah, son of Judah, was the king's agent in all matters of public administration. Some of the people of Judah lived in Kiriath Arba with its villages, Dibon with its villages, and Jechabzeel with its villages. They also lived in Jeshua, Molada, Beth Pellet, Hazer Shul, Beersheba with its villages, Ziklag, and Mekona with its villages. They were also in Enrimmon, Zora, Jarmuth, Zenoa, and Adulam with their villages. They were also in Lachish and its nearby fields and Ezekah and with its surrounding villages. So the people of Judah were living all the way from Beersheba to the Valley of Himmon. 
Some of the people of Benjamin lived at Geba, Michmash, Aja, and Bethel with its surrounding villages. They were also in Anathoth, Nob, Ananiah, Hazer, Rama, Gitaim, Hadid, Zeboim, Nebelet, Lod, Ono, and the Valley of Craftsmen. Some of the Levites who lived in Judah were sent to live with the tribe of Benjamin. Chapter 12. A history of the priests and Levites. Here is a list of priests and Levites who had returned with Zerubbabel, son of Shittiel, and Jeshua the high priest. Sariah, Jeremiah, Ezra, Amariah, Malach, Hadash, Shechaniah, Hiram, Merimoth, Ido, Ginnathon, Abijah, Miniamin, Modiah, Bilga, Shemaiah, Jorib, Jediah, Shalu, Amic, Hilkiah, and Jediah. These are the leaders of the priests and their associates in the days of Jeshua. The Levites who returned with them were Jeshua, Binu, Kadmiel, Sherebiah, Judah, and Mataniah, who with his associates was in charge of the songs of thanksgiving. Their associates, Bakbakiah and Ani, stood opposite them during the service. Jeshua the high priest was the father of Joachim. Joachim was the father of Eliashib. Eliashib was the father of Joada. Joada was the father of Johanan. Johanan was the father of Jadua. Now, when jo Joachim was a high priest, the family leaders of the priests were as follows. Moriah was leader of the family of Sariah. Hananiah was the leader of the family of Jeremiah. Meshulam was the leader of the family of Ezra. Jehohanan was the leader of the family of Amariah. Jonathan was the leader of the family of Malach. Joseph was the leader of the family of Shechaniah. Adna was the leader of the family of Haram. Helkai was the leader of the family of Merimoth. Zechariah was leader of the family of Ido. Meshulam was leader of the family of Ginnathon. Zikri was leader of the family of Abijah. There was also a leader of the family of Miniamin. Piltai was leader of the family of Modiah. Shemua was leader of the family of Bilga. Jehonathan was leader of the family of Shemaiah. Mattanai was leader of the family of Joyrib. Uzi was leader of the family of Jediah. Kali was leader of the family of Salu. Eber was leader of the family of Amic. Hashabiah was leader of the family of Hilkiah. Nathanael was leader of the family of Jediah. During the reign of Darius II of Persia, a list was compiled of the family leaders of the Levites and the priests in the days of the following high priests. Eliashib, Juada, Johanan, and Jadua. The heads of the Levites' families were recorded in the Book of History down to the days of Johanan, the grandson of Eliashib. These are the family leaders of the Levites. Hashabiah, Sherebiah, Jeshua, Binu, Kadmiel, and other associates who stood opposite them during the ceremonies of praise and thanksgiving. One section representing to the other, one section responding to the other, just as commanded by David, the man of God. This included Mataniah, Bakbakiah, and Obadiah. Meshulam, Talman, and Akab were the gatekeepers in charge of the storerooms at the gates. These all served in the days of Joachim, son of Jeshua, son of Jehozadak, and in the days of Nehemiah the governor and of Ezra the priest and scribe. Dedication to Jerusalem's Wall During the dedication of the new wall of Jerusalem, the Levites throughout the land were asked to come to Jerusalem to assist in the ceremonies. They were to take part in the joyous occasion with their songs of thanksgiving and with the music of cymbals, lyres, and harps. The singers were brought together from Jerusalem and its surrounding villages and from the villages of the Nidophathites. They also came from Beth Gilgal in the area of Geba and Asmaveth, for the singers had built their own villages around Jerusalem. The priests and Levites first dedicated themselves, then the people, the gates, and the wall. I led the leaders of Judah to the top of the wall and organized two large choirs to give thanks. One of the choirs proceeded southward along the top of the wall to the Dung Gate, Hoshiah and half the leaders of Judah followed them, along with Azariah, Ezra, Meshulam, Judah, Benjamin, Shemaiah, Jeremiah, and some priests who played trumpets. Then came Zechariah, son of Jonathan, son of Shemaiah, son of Mataniah, son of Micaiah, son of Zachar, a descendant of Asaph. And finally came Zechariah's colleagues, Shemaiah, Azrael, Milalai, Gil Gilalai, Mai, Nathaniel, Judah, and Han. Hanani. They used the musical instruments prescribed by David, the man of God. Ezra the scribe led this procession. At the fountain gate, they went straight up the steps on the ascent of the wall of the city wall toward the city of David. They passed the house of David and then proceeded to the water gate on the east. 
The second choir went northward around the other way to meet them. I followed them with the other half of the people along the top of the wall past the tower of the ovens to the broad wall, then past the Ephraim gate to the old city gate, past the fish gate and the tower of Hananel, and went on to the tower of the hundred. Then we continued on to the sheep gate and stopped at the guard gate. The two choirs that were giving thanks then proceeded to, to the temple of God, where they took their places. So did I, together with the group of leaders who were with me. We went together with the trumpet-playing priests, Eliakim, Messiah, Miniamin, Micaiah, Elianai, Zechariah, and Hananiah, and the singers, Messiah, Shemaiah, Eliezer, Uzi, Jehohanan, Melchizedek, Elam, and Ezer. They played and sang loudly and clearly under the direction of Jezrehiah, the choir director. Many sacrifices were offered on that joyous day, for God had given the people cause for great joy. The women and children also participated in the celebration, and the joy of the people of Jerusalem could be heard far away. Provisions for temple worship. On that day, men were appointed to be in charge of the storerooms for the gifts, the first part of the harvest, and the tithes. They are responsible to collect these from the fields as required by the law for the priests and Levites, for all the people of Judah value the priests and Levites and their work. They perform the service of their God in the service of purification as required by the law, the laws of David and his son Solomon, and so do the singers and the gatekeepers. The custom of having choir directors to lead the choirs and hymns of praise and thanks to God began long ago in the days of David and Asa. So now in the days of Zerubbabel and Nehemiah, the people brought a daily supply of food for the singers, the gatekeepers, and the Levites. The Levites in turn gave a portion of what they received to the priests, the descendants of Aaron. Chapter 13, Nehemiah's Various Reforms. On that day, on that same day as the book of Moses was being read, the people found a statement which said that no Ammonite or Moabite should ever be per permitted to enter the assembly of God, for they had not been friendly to the Israelites when they left Egypt. Instead, they hired Balaam to curse them, though our God turned the curse into a blessing. When this law was read, all those of mixed ancestry were immediately expelled from the assembly. Before this had happened, Eliashib the priest, who had been appointed a supervisor of the storms for the temple of God, and who was also a relative of Tobiah, had converted a large storage room and placed it at Tobiah's disposal. The room had previously been used for storing the grain offerings, frankincense, temple utensils, and tithes of grain, new wine, olive oil, and the special portions set aside for the priests. Moses had decreed that these offerings belonged to the Levites, the singers, and the gatekeepers. I was not in Jerusalem at that time, for I had returned to the king in the 32nd year of the, of the reign of King Artaxerxes of Babylon, though I later received this, his permission to return. When I arrived back in Jerusalem and learned the extent of this evil deed of Eliashib, that he had provided Tobiah with a room in the courtyards of the temple of God, I became very upset and threw all of Tobiah's belongings from the room. Then I demanded that the rooms be purified, and I brought back the utensils for God's temple, the grain offerings, and the frankincense. I also discovered that the Levites had not been given what was due them, so they and the singers who were to conduct the worship services had all returned to work their fields. I immediately confronted the leaders and demanded, Why has the temple of God been neglected? Then I called all the Levites back again and restored them to the proper duties. And once more, all the people of Judah began bringing their tithes of grain, new wine, and olive oil to the temple storerooms. I put Shelemiah the priest, Zedek the scribe, and Padiah, one of the Levites, in charge of the storerooms, and I appointed Hanan, son of Zachar, and grandson of Mataniah as their assistant. These men had an excellent reputation, and it was their job to make honest distributions to their fellow Levites. Remember this good deed, O oh my God, and do not forget all that I have faithfully done to the temple of my God. One Sabbath day, I saw some men of Judah treating their wine press, treading their wine presses. They were also bringing in bundles of grain and loading them on their donkeys. And on that day, they were bringing their wines, grapes, figs, and all sorts of produce to Jerusalem to sell. So I rebuked them for selling their produce on the Sabbath. There were also some men from Tyre bringing in fish and all kinds of merchandise. They were selling it on the Sabbath to the people of Judah and in Jerusalem at that. So I confronted the leaders of Judah. Why are you profaning the Sabbath in this evil way? Wasn't it enough that your ancestors did this sort of thing so that our God brought the present troubles upon us in our city? Now you are bringing even more wrath upon the people of Israel by permitting, this, permitting the Sabbath to be desecrated in this way. So I commanded that, that, that from then on the gates of the city should be shut as darkness fell every Friday evening, not to be opened until the Sabbath ended. I also sent some of my own servants to guard the gates so that no merchandise could be brought in on the Sabbath day. The merchants and tradesmen with a variety of wares camped outside Jerusalem once or twice. But I spoke harshly to them and said, What are you doing out here camping around the wall? If you do this again, I will arrest you. 
and that was the last time they came on the Sabbath. Then I commanded, commanded the Levites to purify themselves and to guard the gates in order to preserve the holiness of the Sabbath. Remember, remember this good deed also, O oh my God. Have passion, have compassion on me according to your great and unfailing love. About that same time, I realized that some of the men of Judah had married women from Ashdod, Ammon, and Moab. Even worse, half their children spoke the language of Ashdod or some other people and could not speak the language of Judah at all. So I confronted them and called, the, called down curses on them. I beat some of them and pulled out their hair. I made them swear before God that they would not let their children intermarry with the pagan people of the land. Wasn't this exactly what led King Solomon of Israel into sin? I demanded. Was there no king from any nation who could compare to him? And God loved him and made him king over all Israel. But even he was led into sin by his foreign wives. How could you even think of committing this sinful deed and acting unfaithfully toward God by marrying foreign women? One of the sons of Joada, son of Eliashib, the high priest, had married a daughter of Sanblit, the Horonite, so I banished him from my presence. Remember them, O oh my God, for they have defiled the priesthood and the promises and vows of the priests and Levites. So I purged out everything foreign and assigned tasks to the priests and Levites, making certain that, that each knew his work. I also made sure that the supply of wood for the altar was brought at the proper times and that the first part of the harvest was collected for the priests. Remember this in my favor, O oh my God. That is all for the book of Nehemiah. Okay, Job 28. Job speaks of wisdom and understanding. People know how to mine silver and refine gold. They know how to dig iron from the earth and smelt copper from stone. They know how to put light into darkness and explore the farthest, darkest regions of the earth as they search for ore. They sink a mine shaft into the earth far from where anyone lives. They descend on ropes swinging back and forth. Bread comes from the earth, but below the surface the earth is melted as by fire. People know how to find sapphires and gold dust, treasures that no bird of prey can see, no falcon's eye observe, for they are deep within the mines. No wild animal has ever walked upon the, those treasures, no lion has set his paw there. People know how to tear apart flinty rocks and overturn the roots of mountains. They cut tunnels in the rocks and uncover precious stones. They dam up the trickling streams and bright, and bring to light the hidden treasures. But do people know where to find wisdom? Where can they find understanding? No one knows where to find it, for it is not found among the living. It is not here, says the ocean, nor is it here, says the sea. It cannot be bought for gold or silver. Its value is greater than all the gold of Ophir, greater than precious onyx stone or sapphires. Wisdom is far more valuable than gold and crystal. It cannot be purchased with jewels mounted in fine gold. Coral and valuable rock crystal are worthless in trying to get it. The price of wisdom is far above pearls. Topaz from Ethiopia cannot be exchanged for it. Its value is greater than the purest gold. But, but do people know where to find wisdom? Where can they find understanding? For it is hidden from the eyes of all humanity. Even the sharp-eyed birds in the sky could not discover it, but destruction and death say, We have heard a rumor from where wisdom can be found. God surely knows where it can be found, for he looks throughout the whole earth under all the heavens. He made the winds blow and determined how much rain should fall. He made the laws of the rain and prepared a path for the lightning. Then, when he had done all this, he saw wisdom and measured it. He established it and examined it thoroughly. And this is what he says to all humanity. The fear of the Lord is true wisdom. To forsake evil is real understanding. Okay, Galatians chapter 1. Greetings from Paul. Okay, so no book, another book um, from Paul. This letter is from Paul, an apostle. I was not appointed by any group or by human authority. My call is from Jesus Christ himself. And from God the Father, who raised Jesus from the dead. All the brothers and sisters here join me in sending greetings to the churches of Galatia. May grace and peace be yours from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. He died for our sins just as God our Father planned, in order to rescue us from the evil world in which we live. This is why all glory belongs to God through all the ages of eternity. Amen. There is only one good news. I am shocked that you are turning away so soon from God, who in his love and mercy called you to share the eternal life he gives through Christ. You are already following a different way that pretends to be the good news, but it is not the good news at all. You are being fooled by those who twist and change the truth concerning Christ. Let God's curse fall on anyone, including myself, who preaches any other message than the one we told you about. 
Even if an angel comes from heaven and preaches any other message, let him be cursed forever. I will say it again. If anyone preaches any other gospel than the one you welcomed, let God's curse fall upon that person. Obviously, I'm, I'm not trying to be a, a people pleaser. No, I am trying to please God. If I were still trying to please if I were still trying to please people, I would not be Christ's servant. Paul's message comes from Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, I solemnly assure you that the good news of salvation which I preach is not based on mere human reasoning or logic. For my message came by a direct revelation from Jesus Christ himself. No one else taught me. You know what I was like when I followed the Jewish religion? How I violently persecuted the Christians? I did my best to get rid of them. I was one of the most religious Jews of my own age, and I tried as hard as possible to follow all the old traditions of my religion. But then something happened, for it pleased God in his kindness to choose me and call me, even before I was born. What undeserved mercy. Then he revealed his son to me, so that I could proclaim the good news about Jesus to the Gentiles. When all this happened to me, I did not rush out to consult with anyone else, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to consult with those who were apostles before I was. No, I went away into Arabia and later returned to the city of Damascus. It was not until three years later that I finally went to Jerusalem for a visit with Peter and stayed there with him for 15 days. And the only other apostle I met at that time was James, our Lord's brother. You must believe what I am saying, for I declare before God that I am not lying. Then after this visit, I went north into the provinces of Syria and Sicilia. And still the Christians in the churches of Judea, Judea didn't know me personally. They all knew what all they knew was, what, was that people were saying, the one who used to persecute us now preaches the very faith he tried to destroy. And they gave glory to God because of me. That's all for today's reading. We'll see you next time.